The Smiley 5 8 telescoping antenna is pretty popular with SAR and ACMG and AMGA guides as well as recreationalists mainly for when they are doing multi-day backcountry trips and repeaters could be right on the fringe of your range. So we're going to look at the best way to field tune that antenna when you pull it out of the top flap of your pack and put it on your radio and you want to hit that distant repeater. So we're going to assume that you know what those repeater frequencies are and have a look at how to tune that 5 8 telescoping in order to hit that repeater. So when you first take the 5 8 wave out of your pack and it's collapsed, you can see here that at 144 we've got a standing wave of 1.383 so we'll call that 1.4 and now what we're going to do is we're going to you can't see me but I'm fully extending it and then we'll give this a minute to register and uh, do another sweep here and you can see that fully extended at that same frequency at 1.4 that slightly improved the standing wave at 1.368 at least I believe it did my memory's too short to tell me what it was so then um, what we're going to try and do now is see what happens if we collapse the top section halfway down and I believe this is at 113 centimeters when it's fully extended so now I've put the top section halfway down and we are going to do another sweep here and you can see that what's happened is we have moved at 150 which is what we wanted to try our standing wave down to 1.29 so I'm happy enough with that to say that for 150 the top section we're going to put it down halfway so what happens if we want to get around 155 I'm going to put the top section now down all the way and we're going to sweep that again and now we're going to see where we are at the bottom this is what we're looking for the bottom here and at about 155 we're a little ahead there and we've got a standing wave of 1.33 again that's with the top section fully collapsed let's see what happens if we take the top section of the telescoping and the bottom section of the telescoping and move the bottom section halfway I'm going to do the bottom section halfway again and we're roughly gotten there so for 160 we're getting a standing wave of 1.27 and in order to get that optimal standing wave we have roughly collapsed the top section by one and the bottom section by half and at 165 you've got a standing wave of 1.4 so I think just for terms of simplicity in the field I would be happy with that again top section collapsed bottom section collapsed now let's go and take it up to 170 and see where we're at when we get to 170 we're just just a little bit past the curve but again 
with a standing wave of 1.3 I would probably still be happy with that so I think what we can conclude is that if you want anything from uh, about 160 to 170 you collapse the top and bottom sections and then if you actually uh, let's say for example uh, ACMG frequencies around 173 dot something or other um, and you're wanting to hit ACMG I am now collapsing the top section by half and I'm going to move my marker over to 175 roughly and uh, let's see where that takes us that gets us pretty close as well to the bottom of the curve I probably could have collapsed it just a wee bit less but now we're looking for 175 one top section fully collapsed one bottom section fully collapsed and the next section below the top about collapsed halfway I've got the counterpoise on and it's interesting with respect to the angle that I'm holding the counterpoise at which I won't be able to show you but in order to move the bottom of the curve the antenna is fully extended I am right now about 30 degrees off the vertical plane and that brings the lower part of the curve which is what we want over toward my fully extended frequency here where I'm at 145 is what I'm trying to achieve the lower now if I move that counterpoise so it's 90 degrees to the vertical you can see what happens here and of course I'm holding the counterpoise so you can factor that in now if I point it down 45 degrees this is what we're looking at so it's interesting that if we think of radials on a base antenna that are typically advised to uh, bend them down at 45 that's possibly because th there are four or eight or twelve of them the more the better but with a single counterpoise you don't see that same benefit from going downward at 45 whereas by going up at about 60 or 65 or even 70 you're going to move the better standing wave ratio toward the lower frequencies if you have to get them now what we're going to do is collapse the top section and put the, the counterpoise and if I remember correctly fully collapsed top was that not something like 155 so let's go over to 155 and move our marker there and you can see again that in order to bring the standing wave over to get the best possible ratio around 155 again I'm going up vertically beside the antenna and right now I am about 20 degrees off of the vertical axis and what we're seeing here is at 155 we do have some improvement we can get a standing wave of about 1.25 by playing with it a little more I can get some results but this right here now is about 20 degrees off of the vertical and so if you want counterpoise and uh, now we're going to stand a wave of 
1.15 let's say uh, anywhere so that is um, pretty good counterpoise isn't out like we'd expect it to be if I do put it out to 90 degrees then what we're looking at is it's moved it quite a ways over to around 165 so now speaking of 165 we're going to collapse a bottom section and now I'm holding the counterpoise out at 90 and by collapsing the bottom section we have moved over so the best standing wave is above 176 again let me move it up so it's 20 degrees off the vertical and move my marker to 165 it's right about there and you can see again that in order to get the best standing wave I'm about again about 20 degrees off the vertical and in that area it's giving me a standing wave of below 1.2 and I'm about 10 degrees now off of the vertical on that. So if you want to achieve the best possible signal with the 5 8 wave smiley telescoping and you add counterpoise, it seems that you will be bringing the counterpoise up to about within 20 degrees, between 10 and 20 degrees of the vertical off the vertical plane in order to get the best standing wave ratio. Of course all this begs the question then what would happen if you just extended it all the way out and had your counterpoise drooping down to the ground which is what I've done I'm not even touching it right now where you can see this and it's just making an arc and pointing down at the ground so what I'm going to do to start here at 145 is hold it up at a 90 degree angle and you can see it brings that curve over about halfway to 145 and now I move it up at a 45 degree angle and it's slowly starting to come over that way and if I move it up now I'm about 10 degrees away from the antenna mast there so 5 or 10 degrees I've got about 3 quarters of an inch of space at the top of the counterpoise there right now so now if I come over to 60 and wait for that to happen you can see that that's even a little much it looks like that's about 150 there now I'll just move my marker over to 150 to make it easier to see and I'm at again about 60 now if I come part way between 60 and 45 it looks like I'm around 155 now 45 degrees it would appear that I'm getting just a little tiny under 45 now which is going to bring me over to the 160 now I come down below 45 so I'm about 30 off of the horizontal plane and it's still over there below 160 where it's optimal and now if I come down to 45 it looks like it's getting me about 160 and so there is the answer and if you wanted to know what the standing wave was for any of those I'm just letting it droop now um, it looks like drooping down without me 
hanging on to it has brought it over to about 175 but let's see what the standing wave is over there it looks like it's 1.09 so if you wanted to use it fully extended with the counterpoise it looks like you would get some improvement if you knew how to position your counterpoise appropriately without having to play around with shortening the sections. So with no counterpoise you can clearly see that shortening the sections is desirable. It's something you'd need to practice and remember for when you go out in the field and if you want to put the counterpoise on and improve your SWR by a pretty comfortable margin there. We're looking here now at uh, less than 1.1 1 .1 at 175. That's what you could do. Just before we go, I think I mentioned in the introduction that we are or have been uh, working with this Smiley 155 Super Stick. So, for example, the 165 Super Stick is also a popular item for people that are transmitting in some of the higher commercial frequencies. And we're going to have a really quick look at the characteristics of how that differs in terms of the sweet spots for collapsing to get the frequencies that can be matched. And I'm going to go through a number of stills here. And what you can do is get the uh, standing wave from up over here where you see my cursor moving around. And uh, you can pause it if you need be. Right now you can see where the marker is. It's at 165. The marker doesn't always move in the stills. So keep that in mind. And what you are looking at right now is the 165 Super Stick fully collapsed. Right now I am extending it to its full length <coughs> and in a second here you'll see it change and it looks like the sweet spot for full extension is right over here at about 150. So uh, I am now gonna pause that here and then bring in the stills to show where the rest of those sweet spots are for collapsing the tip halfway and then all the way and then we start working on the bottom section to get us up to 175. <laughs>